Hey, good evening, everybody. All right, so this is coming a little bit later in the day than what we're normally used to doing, but we'll go ahead and get this recorded and out of the way. So we're Road, road, uh, road to the Apocalypse, where we take a look at the road map. I'm distracted. My wife's playing her uh, landmark game on the TV, and so I'm <laughs> watching all the stuff that she's building. All right, so let's talk about the road map here. We're under, well, I think we finished server stuff yeah net code and whatnot okay so we're on to general options we're going to talk about that uh so first things first we've got graphic settings oh yeah so i know that's going to be a big source of talking right there let me tell you so right now it says the graphics in the dead linger are ever improving through development if your question is will the graphics improve you can be sure of a definite and resounding yes the graphics are currently in alpha and we have many more things to add ranging from anti-aliasing, aliasing, I don't know how you say it, um, to magnificent vistas and incredible shadows, all complete with optional and multiple levels of graphic settings so you can run the game at peak performance for your PC setup. All right, 30% for the graphics. Let me just tell you that, yes, it's going to get better. This reminds me, I can't remember what game it was. Oh man, I can't remember. It was a good example. I just remember a long time ago I was watching a particular game and it was going through its alpha testing and the graphics were not super cool. And then later on, as it came like into beta and stuff, then they said, okay, here's the graphics we're going with. And they did like this major engine upgrade and the new character models, everything looked fantastic. And I can't remember what game that was because it was like a, a really good example of like place art holders and things like that while you fix the important stuff such as stability and basic game mechanics and things like that. And so for a lot of the games, the graphics come secondary. Gameplay and bug fixes come first. Now Dead Linger is no different really except you might say, but they still have bugs. Well that's true. They still got bugs that they're fixing. However, I will say this though, they do a really, really good job of communicating these fixes as they come along. <laughs> so, some of the bugs, you know, are obviously not going to get fixed. And then some of the bugs are, you know, being worked on as we speak. The, the trick is, just like any company though, it's finding that balance between bug fixes and improving things like graphics. I mentioned that because that's what we're talking about is graphics. The Dead Linger has hit a point now where they've done a lot of bug fixes if you will. Stability has improved quite a bit. It's not perfect by any means but um, they're gonna go ahead and start putting in some newer graphics and I've mentioned this before that's important because they've got their conventions that they're going to and that's where they're going to show a lot of these new people like, you know, hey, where have you guys been for the past, you know, year? Well, here's where we are and here's what we have. The really big disadvantage they have is on build 10, they changed from one graphics engine to another. And I only call that a, a, a drawback, if you will, because they had to recode pretty much the entire game. I don't know the specifics on that, but they had to recode quite a bit. On top of that, that's a new graphics engine, which brings its own issues. So, you know, changing engines mid-stride, I can only imagine what a headache that is. But they've hit a point now where in its current build, the game is as stable as it's going to get until they release some of these new things for build 14. And a lot of build 14 is focusing on graphics. And they've already said in some of their tweets that improving the textures are going to help them improve memory usage because some of the current textures they have use a lot. Now I could be misunderstanding that but there was a tweet from Richard who said hey he found one of the big memory problems and that was the textures. So that's how I interpret that. That could be wrong but I that's kind of what made sense to me when I read his tweet. Uh, so with that though, then you might say, well, how does graphics fix things like duplicating bugs and stuff like that? They don't. Um, that's actually that balance of bug fixing and graphics that's going to come with Build 14. If you also follow Richard Keen's tweets, you'll see that he has been working on uh, 
the placement of buildings and stuff so they should now place more consistently on flat ground um, I believe he did like the content generation code something like that has been worked on as well tweaked revamped improved that should fix and help with the item duplications in the game item bar okay the barricading no definite tweet on that yet if barricading will be fixed with this build graphics won't fix the barricading that's a completely separate thing they have to fix um, but like if they can get the barricading and some of this duplicating done then bring the new graphics you're gonna have a completely different game and I I say this because um, you know right now the game is playable they need to start making it pretty because at the conventions that's what they're gonna be showing folks and people wanna see a pretty looking game not always sometimes we want the gameplay over the graphics but I tell you what when you're talking like packs and a lot of these big things graphics is what you really want to show folks so it's starting to come together really looking good some of the screenshots that they've posted in their tweets the Twitter feed uh, amazing new sky effects coming looks great uh, the trees are getting fixed the trees look great uh, so I'm really really impressed with what I've seen in screenshots new textures and stuff seeing that in practice is gonna be something different now this has also gotten me thinking about the multiplayer and how that's gonna impact multiplayer I have not seen or read anything that talks about their uh, dedicated multiplayer support yet they have multiplayer in the game and we did a live stream I was just trying to see if it would work and if I could stream it live I spent a lot of the multiplayer experience just trying to figure out how to get the stream working and we got some folks in but let me tell you my experience was not optimal <laughs> I was quite frequently lagging and waiting for the game to draw in and catch up um, I had issues Lunas games our buddy here he's he's got a, a multiplayer up right now which we'll probably take a look at later um, which should help with that so again you might be saying how does that tie into graphics well quite a bit because again if they can improve their texture usage with their graphic updates that all means more efficient memory usage that means as you do multiplayer uh, your system will run better because you know you don't have to to worry so much about the survivor skins and stuff like that they've been optimized or you know they're undergoing optimization so graphics really do play hand in hand with your performance so not only does it make things look pretty improves performance put that side by side with the uh, continuing bug fixes and content world generation and all that good stuff build 14 I think is going to be a really really good build the only drawback is we have to wait for it gotta wait uh, so you know let's let's keep this one kind of short today that's that's a pretty good amount to talk about for graphic settings I, I'm really excited to see what's coming out the only thing I'm gonna just stray a little bit from the road to the apocalypse is talk about H1Z1 okay and how that will affect the dead linger and I, I gotta say I think the dead linger is still in a great spot for it to be in so let, let's take a look at here H1Z1 and here's the home page now when you pop into the home page right now there's there's nothing I mean it's a pretty picture uh, since we're talking about graphics I think it would be unfair to talk about zombie games and not look at an example of one coming out now there's not a whole lot of pictures here on the web page it's just a, a animated graphic uh, DayZ standalone is one that you'd also want to talk about graphics we want to talk about quality right now dead linger is like dead last when compared to say well I won't say compared to rust rust might have some things more polished up in the current state but yeah dead linger pretty much falls last right now h1z1 I want to talk about because that's the one that's got my interest Daisy standalone is a similar server game that has like 16 32 players something like that so it would probably be more fair to compare the dead linger and Daisy standalone but I'm gonna go ahead and start comparing this to H1Z1 by Sony and talk about graphics and some comparisons between the two games and why I think the Dead Linger is still gonna be an outstanding game in its niche. So let's take a look at the Reddit for H1Z1. Now I'm not trying to do any 
names and stuff like that. This is just coming right in, in here to Reddit. But just to, I wish they had more of the tweets. I'm going to have to go and look up Smedley's tweets and stuff like that. But I've seen a couple things that came out here. Like, if you come look, they're going to talk about barricade. I haven't looked at it. I wanted to find a couple of these. Uh, this, this, their Reddit is so busy. <sighs> Let's see. Maybe the Twitter page. Let's go there. Because they've had some tweets from folks. Here's some graphics. Uh, yeah, these are kind of old smedley. Yeah. I don't want I don't want to dig too much, but let's just let's just say here that there was a tweet that I read by Smedley uh that was posted on the Reddit page that pretty much Smedley said, Hey, if you don't like a hard game, don't play this game. And that got a lot of positive responses, like, yeah, finally it's a hard game. And the thing is a lot of folks are are confused on like what hard means. A lot of folks seem to mean that hard means it's got to have hardcore PVP. Like that's the focus is you're running around killing other people. And that's tough cuz it really seems split between PVE support and PVP support. You know, there's a lot of folks asking for a PVE server and then there's a lot of folks coming on saying no, never make a PVE server because survival means killing other players and then some people say no survival means you're trying to build a community and survive amongst the zombies so there's still I think a break in what survival means and it is a matter of opinion and it looks like H1Z1 for all the pretty graphics that it has it looks like it's leaning more towards the PvP aspect one of the things though that might set it apart with the PvP formula is the fact that it's going to be a massive world with a, like a thousand player servers like a thousand it says because you know Sony does MMOs EverQuest and that kind of stuff and they're known for games with lots and lots of players it's built on the Planet Side 2 engine which they're going to tweak for this game specifically but what could make it different is the fact that even though there's a PvP focus, if you can get a community together, then that community can focus on the survival and defending itself against bandits. Like, I think that's their intention, is player-made factions. So you're not going to pop into the game and choose a faction. You're going to pop into the game and either A, outside of the game on websites have found you a faction and you know some people in the game to team up with and you make your own society, or... You just pop into the game and take your chances with finding good, decent people. Their thought was to make the world so big that the player per area ratio is pretty low that it doesn't force you into PvP matches. You know, it's not Call of Duty, it's not Battlefield 4, it's an apocalypse game. So they've been saying how their world can actually grow based on how many people are in it. So it's quite possible that if you run far enough, you'll eventually be kind of alone and not be forced into PvP, even though there's like a thousand people on your server. Okay, so what does this have to do with the Dead Linger? Quite a bit, actually. Because the Dead Linger is still going to fill that niche game of a survival game where the emphasis is on surviving the zombies and not the other players. So unless you play something big like H1Z1 and you find communities that are trying to work together, then it's going to be a PvP fest. You take the Dead Linger with survival mode and the server side options. Yeah, there's still some PvP in the survival mode, but the emphasis is on surviving the zombies, crafting, building up your barricades, and things like that. That, to me, still is a big thumbs up when comparing that to what's been said for H1Z1. So the Dead Linger is still going to be a valid, valid game, even though we have a, a juggernaut from Sony coming out. The other thing too about this H1Z1, that's a triple A game company. So they have the resources of S Sony game development and everything. So this is going to be a game that's going to come out quick. The beta alpha access, Steam access is coming out in the next few weeks they've said. Uh, like up to, up to six weeks for Steam access. So you know you, you got to pay like 20 bucks they said to get into it. So we'll, we'll see what it's like. Uh, I've already some folks have expressed interest in like coming up with a community you know so if we want to play H1Z1 together let's get a community because I don't mind having a couple different games because overall 
H1Z1 is going to be a free to play. So when it's out, I can play both. So just something to keep in mind here. Uh, mostly because the thought of graphics triggered that, and that made me think of Sony's coming out, and it has some pretty good graphics from some of the screenshots I've seen. Compare the gameplay. I'm waiting to see a roadmap for H1Z1, and then I'll start an H1Z1 roadmap. I might just have to make something up for that. But uh, So I don't want to take too much of your dead linger time talking about another game, but I think it's important that we talk about a big competitor and why that still makes the dead linger a very valid game up against some of these big juggernauts coming out. All right, let's go ahead and wrap that up. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Drop your opinions down in the comments. I always like hearing what folks have to say. We generate some great conversation that way, and I will see everybody for the next roadmap. All right, good night, everybody. Bye.